All right, we're successfully grabbing data with the use query hook, and we're adding data with the use mutation hook, and we're also modifying the cache to update the query with the data that we actually add with the mutation hook. And we know also know how to use the query client to invalidate data to refetch it, and also how to update the cache so we won't have to hit that endpoint again when we already have the data. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the hook use infinite query because sometimes you want to have a button, for example, here to fetch more data because this is page one. And as you can see here, we have actually two pages on this one. We have a total of 12 users and we have total pages of two. So we're only showing six of them per page is six. And we want to show the other six that so we want to show all the users. So you could hook this up to a button as I'm going to do, or you could have an infinity scroll or something. I have videos on that on my channel. So look in my channel if you want to learn how to create an infinity scroll. So go back to the code and inside app component again up here. We're not going to use query in this one, so we can remove it. Use infinite query. That's the one that we're going to import instead. So here we're going to re remove this one, the use query. And instead, we're going to use the use infinite query. So const, I'm going to destructure out some stuff. I have the data is loading, I have is fetching, and fetch next page. That's the one that I'm going to use. You can also fetch data bidirectional, so you can fetch the previous page if you want to do that. Check the documentation on React Query if you have that need to do something like that. And we also have a property that's called has next page. And we have the error equal. We call the use infinite query hook. Just as before, we're going to provide it with a key. So we have the same key, users. And then we have an object where we have a property that's called get next page param. And this one is going to be called with a function that will give us the last page and the pages. So we use this one to calculate what the next page will be. And we have to modify our function up here, our fetch users function. So I'm going to rename this to fetch infinite users. It's going to be called with an object from the use infinite query hook that is going to provide it with a page param. So from that one, I just structure out the page param. I set it to one. If we don't have a page param, then we start at the first page. So this object here is something that we use infinite query will provide to this function. It's going to call it with this object and it has a property that's called the page param. And this is going to be the one that we're going to calculate here on the get next page param. So we also have to add this one in here. I'm going to create the template literal instead. So I have back ticks. And then I add a question mark. We have a URL param that's called page equal. And then I'm going to attach my page param with dollar sign curly brackets. And I have the page param inside of this template literal. So that's essentially what we have to do to modify this fetch function. So we take in this object where we destructure out the page param and we set it to a default value of one if this one is undefined or something. And we attach that one to the URL here. So this is how it knows what page to fetch. All right, but we have to calculate that, that uh, page param also. So that's what we're gonna do here in the get next page param. So we know the last page and we know all the pages. So I'm gonna create an if statement, if last page dot page, if, if that one is less than last page dot total underscore pages, then I'm going to return the next page, and we have the last page plus one. Otherwise, if this isn't true, we return false, and this will set the has next page to false. So that means that we're on the last page, and this one will be false. So if we look at the data here in the browser, you can see that we have this total pages and the page that we're currently on. So these are the properties that I having this if statement here, if last page dot page is less than last page dot total pages. 
then I'm going to return the last page plus one. Otherwise, I return false because that means that we're on the last page and this has next page boolean will turn false. So if we scroll down here somewhere, yeah, I'm not renaming this one to users. Yeah, it's called data. Yeah, it's all right. I changed this one to data. And now we actually get back an array with arrays because we have the different pages. So I'm going to, I'm going to comment this one out and show you. So I console log the data, save the file, go back to the browser, and now we're not showing anything here. And we're actually not fetching anything either, so uh, something is wrong. Yeah, and that's of course because I haven't provided it with a fetch function. Uh, we have to do that also, of course. So we have this object here, and of course before that object, we have to provide the fetch function. So fetch infinite users, comma, and then we have this object here. So save the file, go back to the browser, reload it, and here you can see that we get back the data in the console. So that means that we have an array with pages, and we also have the page params. This one is going to be undefined because it's the first page. And that's why I also set this one to be one if it's undefined. And then we have a property that's called pages, where we have all the pages. So this is the same data as before, but it's put in this property that's called pages. So this is actually an object we get back here, but the pages is an array, and the page params is also an array. So that means that we need to do a nested loop when we display the data. So instead of this one here, this one should be data. But we have to do a nested loop. So first we have to grab the data.pages and we have to map that one. So we have a page, we have an inline arrow function. I'm going to do an implicit return and I move this one up inside this nested loop. Yeah, this curly bracket should go down below here. Do some auto formatting. So first I map through all the pages and then I map through the data on each page. You can merge this uh, in some other way if you want to do it uh, in your component up here before you render it out. Oh, I have some error. Cannot read property map of undefined and that's because, yeah, it shouldn't be data here, it should be page because it's the page data that we map through. And now you can see that it looks just exactly as before. And if I add a user, it won't work because old data is not iterable. Yeah, it doesn't matter now because the old data is also a nested array now, so that's why it won't work. But you get the idea, I won't fix that now. Because now I want to add a button to actually load more data. So down below here, First, I'm going to check the is fetching. If that one is true, I have the p tag and I'm going to display loading like this. And is fetching is running each time you fetch something, is loading is only going to be true on the hard fetching of stuff, probably the first time you fetch it. And then is fetching is going to kick in and display true when you fetch new data. All right. Then I'm going to display a button. And yet again, I'm going to check another prop, another boolean, and that's has next page. If we have a next page, I'm going to display a button with an on-click handler that's going to be fetch next page, like this. And the button is going to say load more. All right. So now we're using all of these properties that we destructure out here. Save the file, go back to the browser, and hopefully it will work. This one is displaying, as you can see. So that means that we have another page to fetch. And here you have it. And it shouldn't display this one here. It's actually fetching the first page. All right, let's get back and see what I did wrong. Yeah, and of course, last page, it should say last page dot page. So that's why it won't work. 
All right, save it, go back again, reload it. And now you can see we have the load more and it's not displaying now. So it loads the other uses here. So now it's working. So we can see here also the page params. We have currently two. The first one is undefined and we have the pages. So the first element in the array is the first set of data and the second element is the second set of data. So it's working and that's essentially the basics of the use infinite query hook in React Query. If you like this stuff, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Tomorrow I will put out another video in this series.